Hey everyone, I'm Teresa. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Today I want to talk to you about everything that I made in the month of January. So January was a bit of a month for me. I'm kind of amazed that I have very much of anything to show you guys today. If you were keeping up with my community tab, you might have known that I got really sick. I had a really awful stomach bug for about the first week of January. I was rough for a good long while and pretty much just in bed the whole time, not up to doing anything. And after that, I then also for like the last week of January, something along those lines, about a week and a half of January, our boiler broke at home, which meant that we had no heat, no hot water, but we also had a plumber in the house who had taken over the room that I am currently in, because this is the room Room that our boiler is in and he was drilling taking out the boiler putting in a new one basically just like made a ginormous mess coating everything in a layer of like a black soot in here in our kitchen in our bathroom including all of the stuff you see behind me fortunately my sewing machines were covered but it has taken a lot to get our house back in order so I feel like I lost probably most of the month of January. So I don't know how I managed to sew anything, but you know what? I did and I'm excited to get to show you guys what I did make this month. The first thing is the dress that I'm wearing. So in my previous makes video, I think I showed you guys that I had cut the pieces out for this dress. This is a dress hack that I've been dreaming up of the Zadie jumpsuit for a long, long time. So since I made my first Zadie jumpsuit, I knew I wanted to do a dress hack. I do really like a wrap, but I will say that the Zadie jumpsuit for me the neckline isn't quite where I want it to be it's a little bit lower for myself and I had to put a snap on my Zadie jumpsuit that I made the first one and then I found the peppermint wrap top which is a free sewing pattern from peppermint magazine it's designed by LB textiles the peppermint wrap top seems to be just like exactly the right neckline for me for a wrap and so I've been taking that and mashing it up with the Zadie jumpsuit to create my perfect pattern and that's basically what this is so this wrap here and where it sits, this is what comes from the peppermint wrap top. The whole rest of it though is the Zadie jumpsuit for the bodice. And then I just extended it down slightly A-lined to make it a dress shape to be able to make a dress hack version. I will say that it is a really beautiful fabric that I'm working with. I know I'm not going to be able to show it to you guys super well, but it's something called a shot linen. And so basically there's like the warp and weft threads in one direction it's red and in the other direction it's white. So from a distance it just looks pink and it sort of plays as pink, but actually it's red and white together and it's so cool. It's got some slightly, might not come across here, but I feel like it looks more red and pink in certain lights. A slightly almost sheen to it and it's 100% linen got it from the fabric godmother I really really do love this dress hack if I didn't say the Zadie jumpsuit is by so house 7 I don't know why I've gone blank on that I'll pop it up on the screen if I'm wrong but yeah so I basically just hacked it into a dress version and really do love the outcome it's very comfortable I feel like if I were going to make it again, I would make some changes. So for me, the other thing I've changed with the Zadie jumpsuit when I've made it before is I have to shorten the waist by about an inch because my waist is a bit higher than where the pattern wants it to be. I would also, rather than having more of an A-line dress or A-line skirt version, I think I would prefer to have some gathers and then it could be more straight down and a little bit fuller at the bottom. I will say like I do get good coverage. I'm not flashing anything when I'm moving around either at the top or at the legs, but I think part of that also is because it's a relatively heavy fabric, this linen, so it's not going to flop open. I think if it was a lighter weight fabric, it would probably blow open in a breeze, which would not be a lot of fun. So I think the fact that I've got the right fabric for it really made a difference and it is quite long so I made it more of a maxi length and again when it's longer it's just going to take that little bit more to get it to open up so I feel like it works quite well as it is. I will say that this dress has been like my most liked post on Instagram ever times three times four. I don't know why this dress has blown up on Instagram. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful dress. I think maybe also because we took some really cool photos in the fog in a foggy field. Maybe that's a factor. Who knows what goes on with Instagram's algorithms, honestly, but I will say that I do like this dress. It's really comfortable to wear. It's very much a kind of vibe that I like where it's like 
it's casual, it's comfortable, but it's also kind of elevated and I feel like there's just a lot going on for this dress and I've been wearing it for work, totally plan to wear it at home outside of work as well. Because it's linen, it's going to be breathable when it's a little bit cooler, but it's also not too chilly to wear in the colder weather with some thick tights and you know obviously I can wear like a cardigan over the top or a jacket over the top but I feel like it's going to be a really versatile one to wear. The other thing I will say that I changed with this pattern is instead of the bias bound edge which is what's recommended in the Zadie jumpsuit I did a facing going around the the neckline and the front and that is what's actually in the peppermint wrap top and I just prefer a facing to that I feel like you don't have any stitching lines at the front. I feel like it's a neater finish and I feel like it sits where it wants to or where I want it to. And I feel like it's a successful one. The next thing to tell you guys about is my loungewear set that I made. This loungewear set, I have to say, I think is the most favorite thing to wear that I've ever made, which says a lot. So I'll tell you about the two or the three different elements to it. This was something that I had talked about in my winter sewing plan. So if you saw that video, you might know what this is gonna be, but it is this really fun combination of a sweatshirt and a sweatpants and it just feels so wonderful to wear together. So this is the sweatpants. These are the Stella joggers, which are from the Tilly and the Button stretch book. I put both of them, I added this really cute label, which came from my Kylie and the Machine um, Christmas advent calendar labels. What does it say? Dream it, make it. Color seemed about right as well. Felt very sleepy. So the Stella Joggers is a pattern that I have made before and I know that they fit me. I know that it works. So it was kind of an easy go-to for the bottom half. The fabric is a fleece back sweatshirting. So it's nice and soft and fleecy on the inside. I will say this fleece back is really soft. It's not super heavyweight, so it's not like extremely toasty. Sometimes I feel like sweatshirts can be really overwhelmingly warm, and this is a slightly more lightweight with a little bit of drape to it, but it is so soft, super, super soft. Even from the outside, there's like a, a soft, squishy quality, kind of like a marshmallowy squish to it. It is luxurious, honestly. The inside, I chose to do a contrast with my threads for my overlocker. And honestly, <laughs> it's like 50 parts, that was the thread that I had in my overlocker and 50 parts, I did not have pale blue overlocking thread and I wasn't gonna buy some. And I felt like, well, it's gonna be a contrast one way or another and pink and blue look quite fun together. I mean, no one's seeing the inside of those apart from me. And it actually makes me smile to see the pink inside the blue. So no regrets there. I feel like that was a good one. And then for the top half, I made the Closet Core Mile End sweatshirt. So this sweatshirt is one that, this is unfortunately a bit creasy. I've been wearing this until literally I put this dress on for you guys. So I'll put up some pictures when it's not creased. I even slept in this, but I love it. I love it so, so much. There's so much going on with the design of the Mile End sweatshirt. So it has these darts in the inside of the elbow, sort of the, the corner of the sleeve here. And it just kind of helps to guide guide a little bit of coz around your elbow when you're sitting and relaxing and it feels really snugly. There's also a great detail on the back yoke. Basically there's a yoke to the back. The front has a diagonal seam going from the back to the front. Oh, so difficult to show these things here. I know I'm going to put up some pictures that are going to make it a lot easier to tell what's going on. But I really, really love this. The sleeve again, it's like a two-part sleeve. I'm probably not going to be able to show you that well. But yeah, there's a, it's a two-part sleeve, so you get A, a really good fit, and B, it just feels like it's really structured and there to snuggle you. It feels so, so comfortable. Only thing I would say with this sweatshirt is that it is a bit short. It's meant to be a cropped sweatshirt, and I feel like with the combination with the trousers, the Stella joggers that I had, I think I would either want to increase the rise on the Stella joggers to make them a little bit more high-waisted rather than a mid-rise, and or lengthen the Mylan sweatshirt because it is oversized. I actually sized down a size, so I'll put up the size that I picked in my measurements because I honestly can't remember just off the top of my head. But I sized down and I actually really like the fit of it on me. I feel like the shape and the silhouette are exactly what I really wanted to go for. But because it's a bit cropped as well and it's a bit baggy around the hip area where it ends, 
it can be a little bit drafty and for my cozy loungewear I want to feel snuggled in so I would prefer it to be a little bit longer just to avoid any draft coming in at the bottom of it but honestly wearing this because it's matching I feel super together I feel completely like put together but also extremely comfortable. So like I said, this fabric is super snugly soft. I love wearing it and wearing this set together feels just wonderful. This is what I've been putting on when I felt like I needed to pamper myself, be nice to myself in the midst of all the stuff going on when everything's felt a little bit chaotic. Putting on this set made me feel like I'm looking after myself, I'm doing my bit to make sure I'm okay, and it honestly made me feel really, really good to wear. The other thing that I made for this set, because I mean, how could I not, was a matching scrunchie. I mean, I, I wear, I live in a scrunchie most of the time at home. You know, a messy bun is basically my go-to look when I'm relaxing at home. So when I'm lounging, I'm gonna want a scrunchie, and why am I not gonna make one to match? It's just too perfect. I had such an odd time with this scrunchie. I've had this really weird thing happen. I don't know if any of you have experienced this before. I mean, I've been sewing for a long time. I think I started sewing in 1998, maybe 97. I think it was 98. And I've been sewing for a while. And in general, I feel like I remember most of the things that I've made, but I've made so many things over the years, especially things earlier on that I've completely forgotten about, if I'm honest with you. And when I was making the scrunchie, I had a moment when I turned the fabric right side out, once I put the elastic in there and I was gonna just stitch it, hand stitch it closed. And I had this bizarre, it was like a deja vu kind of moment or like a kind of flashback feeling in my mind. This scrunchie, I have made this scrunchie before. I have not literally made this scrunchie before because I haven't had this fabric before, but I got an extremely similar fabric. I will say it wasn't fleecy on the inside, but the color looked very much the same. The stretch was very much the same. And I basically made a scrunchie pretty much that you would not know the difference if you set it next to this one. And I made that probably in 2001, 2002, something along those lines. And I had 100% forgotten that I had made that scrunchie until I turned this one right side out and was like, that's my scrunchie. That's my old scrunchie that I made. It was the weirdest thing, honestly. It was like a slightly out of body experience. It was a little bit eerie. And every time I look at it, I had this weird moment of like, that's my scrunchie over there. Like, I remember that scrunchie. I know that scrunchie. It's like an old friend that's appeared again in my life. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry if this sounds completely bizarre, but I seriously had like the weirdest experience with this. It was because I'd actually made a scrunchie previously out of another pair of sweatpants that I'd made that I'd self-drafted way back at that time. And I thought I would make a matching scrunchie at that time. Obviously, my brain thinks in similar ways even 20 years on. But yeah, having this whole combination together has just been so much fun, especially when my world around me has felt like it's crumbling around. My sewing space is being destroyed. <laughs> being able to put on that loungewear set has just been such a delight. If I didn't mention that fabric, fabric, I don't think I did. It came from the Fabric Godmother and it is just gorgeous. I will say it had a lot more stretch on the cross grain, so I actually cut it out to make sure that I had enough stretch on the cross. So just bear that in mind. I think anytime you're working with jersey fabric, you just want to check the direction of the most stretch to make sure that it's going to fit you properly. But this set all together turned out just exactly as I had hoped. And I want more loungewear sets. The final thing that I finished this month was this sock. So I am knitting, I'll have to knit the other one obviously, it's just a single sock so far, but I'm still really excited to show you guys. Look at the design on that. I just, I genuinely cannot believe that I did this, that I knitted this. This is the most beautiful sock I think I've ever seen, let alone worn. It is so cool. And um, the whole design of this, this one came from the 52 Weeks of Socks book by Lane Publishing, a book that I ordered or requested on my wish list and got for my birthday before I even knew how to knit anything just because I was so excited by all the socks in there and wanted to just figure it out. And if I was gonna knit, I was gonna wanna knit something that I liked. This is not a beginner pattern and I managed to achieve it. I will say that it was pretty much all new stuff as I went along. The name of this pattern, I think it's pronounced Gerst. 
I could be wrong, but that's my best guess. And it's by a designer called Verena Kors. I'm checking in my book because I don't remember the names of all these things. I'm still like new to knitting in a lot of ways that I don't really have all these terms right in my head and the designers in my head. But yeah, this one you started, it was a toe up sock. I've made one other pattern for socks before that I made two pairs for. This one is completely different. So it's all like new techniques off figuring out new ways to do stuff. But yeah, you cast from toe up this one and you use something called Judy's Magic Cast On. I just love the really over the top names that is given to so many knitting cast ons and cast offs and ways of knitting. But Judy's Magic Cast On from the toe up, which I really struggled with. I think it took me three or four tries to be able to get a toe that I was happy with. And I'm super happy with this one. So I'm a little bit nervous about doing it again, but I know I'll do it because I've done it. So I can do it. It's all good. And then for this, I also used the German short row heel, which is better on one side than it is on the other. That's a little bit more wibbly wobbly, but I don't care. It's a sock. It's going to hold itself together. I'm not wearing it out of the house anyway, but it looks so, so beautiful. I will say that I follow the instructions pretty carefully on there. I learned how to do twisted rib. That's what these little bumpy bits are. Didn't even know that was a thing until I was making this sock. Uh, yeah, just on the whole, I feel like this was a really nice project, something I was able to just sit and work on a little bit here and there whilst we had the plumber in. But it was something that I've been hoping to achieve in this yarn and I've got another sock I'm going to make and then I have another more of like the my special yarn that I'm planning to make it again in once I feel like I know what I'm doing a little bit more. So you'll get to see it on my feet when I've got two socks because I'm not going to put one sock on my foot. That's a little bit weird. But that one was a big success and I am so excited with the outcome. As far as works in progress, I think it was maybe... 31st of January I really had been just craving doing some sewing but I had to you know move out of my sewing space clean up my sewing space before I was able to do that and I was so desperate to do something that I managed to sew up my top here so this is my little I ended up with the mock turtleneck of this top this is the Freya top well it's no it's not it's the Concord tee by Cashmerette with the Freya neckline, the Freya top from the Tilly and the Button Stretch book. So I've made the Freya top before, but I don't love the fit of it, particularly across the high bust area. It's not quite what I want it to be, but the Concord tee by Cashmere is like the perfect tee for me. It's like exactly the perfect fit. So I felt like if I could put on the neckline that I like, then I can theoretically come up with the perfect top that I like. So this is a really gorgeous rib knit. I think this is a bam, it's not bamboo. I feel like it's maybe a tensel. Again, I'm gonna put up on the screen. My, my brain is a little bit foggy still. I feel like I'm still coming out of the fog with the chaos in my house. But it's in this really gorgeous, it's like a pine green color. I really, really love this color and don't have enough of it in my wardrobe. Green in general, I don't have enough in my wardrobe. I haven't even physically put this on yet because I finished it at the end of the month. Well, I finished sewing up the main part of it, but then in February, I've done the hem and the sleeve hems. So I haven't pressed it. I haven't put it on yet. You're not going to get pictures of me in it because that's going to be in my February mix because I did finish it in February, but I sewed up the main body of it. And wow, did that help me like just feel more grounded and to feel better after all of the madness that was going on in my month of January. We're all going to have those months where we're a little bit less effective in our creative tasks because life happens and sometimes that takes over everything. I'm really looking forward to February where I'm hoping that things are going to be much more calm and much more smooth sailing as far as my creative pursuits are involved. I did also manage to cut out, well piece together and cut out the pattern pieces for both the Kiela wrap dress by Name Clothing and the Pippi Pinafore by Jennifer Lauren Handmade, including adjustments that I made to the Jennifer Lauren Handmade pattern. I feel like prepping the pattern pieces is a huge part of it. Now that I've done that, cutting out the fabric won't be so bad. And then once it's cut out, I can get sewing. So I feel like I'm kind of stuck in a little bit into those projects. I had, of course, intended to get all of that fabric cut out and get going on some of the sewing, but we'll get there. It's not a rush, right? Like I'm, I'm doing what I can when I can do it. I hope that all of you had a much more productive, creative sewing month in January. If you didn't, at least you can relate to my woes. And I hope that all of you had a good have a good month coming ahead. If you did like my video, please do give me a thumbs up down below. 
If you enjoyed seeing the projects that I made this month or had any big wins for yourself in the month of January, please let me know in the comments down below as well. Please hit that subscribe button if you're liking my videos and you're not already subscribed to my channel. And I will see you all soon, hopefully very soon, with more actual sewing content. See you later, guys. Bye.